Hello, beautiful people. Shalom, money makers. So I want to talk to you guys about the current state of the cryptocurrency market and what I am personally doing. Now, I usually don't really share what I am doing specifically. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, what I'm doing in you'll have to wait to the end of the video i'll explain i'll explain what i'm doing but uh it's an interesting time in the crypto market right we went through a kind of a prequel right to the potential of what could happen uh once the crypto market starts going bananas right <laughs> in uh end of february beginning of march and then everything kind of came to a, a standstill still right it could be sell in May and go away, right? And that kind of sentiment where usually, and this has been my experience in the past few years, June and July are kind of down months where not a lot happens, less interest, people are on vacation, soon school is out, right, for the kids. Uh, and people just, they, they don't really interest, right? They don't have interest in, in they're like, oh, it, you know, I've, uh, I'm working in my nine to five. I'm trying to invest. I'm trying to, you know, crypto, but just give me my vacation, right? Let me go and, and decompress a little bit. And then you have crazy like me where I'm 24 <laughs> seven, right? Crypto investing stocks. And, um, and even when I'm on vacation, right? <laughs> I can't really detach from it, right? Uh, which is good and bad, right? I am semi-retired, you could say. So I guess it's okay, right? Um, but, um, the crypto market is this weird place, right? Uh, we'll look at just a second of the sentiment of you know market cycles, um, uh, what's happened previously in the history of the crypto market. Um, little tip, right? I know that the this is not a financial tip; it's a you know a, a emotional tip, right? A psyche tip. <laughs> I know that these days are kind of rough, right? Because you have assets going down and you have you know many people have a lot of weight on crypto because they look at crypto and they say to themselves okay i look at the previous cycles i see people that you know change their life and now it's time for me to change my life too right i don't want to be working this nine to five job anymore that i hate even though i went to four years to university and uh, got into debt to work this job now I hate it, right? <laughs> That's what happens to most people, right? Maybe you like the camaraderie, going to work, but the, the work itself, most people don't like it. Some people do, right? Some people have an amazing job, right? But some, most people don't like it. And so they look to crypto as like, okay, I can invest in crypto in order to diversify myself and potentially make a lot of money uh, doing that, right? And so when we put a lot on this, right, it plays with our emotions. So when crypto is going up, we get all excited. We start fantasizing. We start thinking about stuff. And when crypto starts going down, and it's not crypto, it's, you know, anything. It could be stock market, it could be real estate. We start thinking, oh my God, I'm so stupid. Why didn't I sell when it was at all time highs? Or why didn't I do this? Or why didn't I do that? Um, you know, and, and it plays on us. The depression we feel when things are starting to go down is four times more stronger than the elation we feel when things are going up, right? And that's that's actually a, a scientific study that was done, right? And so when we have days like this where really nothing is happening and we put so much pressure on ourselves, then we start getting a little bit, oh my God, what if it never does it? And what if this never happens? And what if it never goes up? And this this is the highest point and things like that, right? Uh, we need to remember that the, this is part of part of the game. It's part of the cycle. Uh, and uh, I'll show you just in a second how what, this is this always happens, right? <laughs> so uh, my tip here is just to relax, right? I know that it's Monday today, right? And you're probably after your weekend, but try to do something in the next few days that you enjoy. So it could be, you know, uh, an activity that you would like to enjoy. It could be meeting up with friends and doing something fun. Uh, it could do with your, your significant other, right? Um, you know, d relief stress, <laughs> you know, in, in a fun way, right? Wink, wink. <laughs> um, and, and eat some good food, uh, go have a dance party, anything that kind of relieves your mind from what's going on. I know it's very hard to detach. It's hard for me too, right? Uh, but do something fun, right? And, and I, I, I'll, I assure you that that will help you a little bit. 
if you come back and sit in front of the computer and start looking at the graphs, it might, you know, affect you, but at the end of the day, it's going to help you in the long run if you're able to do these kinds of things, okay? So if we take a look where the market is now, right? We have Bitcoin that had this really weird day, went down, came back up. Um, we are seeing that history has repeated itself. The recent rejection from the range high of the reaccumulation range is not out of the ordinary. This is normal. When you take a look and you look at the, you know, the psychology of the market cycle, you always have these kinds of situations, right? You have, um, of course, the downside, right? Which is the depression, right? Uh, we were already there right? <laughs> when Bitcoin was around 15,000, okay? <clears throat> and now I think that we might be in the disbelief right? Um, they're saying to ourselves, oh, this is a sucker rally, right? This is the top. This is never, it's never going to happen, right? It also, this coincides, right? Um, with thinking to ourselves, well, this is like, it's going to fail every single time. Listen, it keeps, it keeps getting rejected and rejected and rejected. Eventually, right? History tells us that it will break out, right? Um, do I know for sure that it's going to break out? No, right? I do not know anything for sure, right? Um, but I know that history tells us, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a second, right? That it breaks out, right? Now, maybe it's not the parabolic move like the other cycles. Those are possibilities. But I don't think that 73,000 is the height of the cycle, right? Um, and with Bitcoin ETFs and Ethereum ETFs, which are coming July 2nd, according to sources, I don't think that we're, we're at the, the end of the road, okay? And, and when I'm, what I'm doing, I'll get to in just a second. If we tilt back, we always see, right, that historically, right, the, the cycles always end with a breakout. Now, this was, of course, 2012, 2013. They had a consolidation, right, for a few months, and then boom, right, it broke out. Then look at this, cons more consolidation. Probably people were like, think, and then, oh my God, right, 2016, right? Same thing, lots of consolidation, and then, whoops, oh, and then, ooh, a pullback, right? And before another run up, and then a pullback, a pullback, right? Even on this big run that it 20X'd, right? Bitcoin 20X'd in, 20, in 2017, it went from a previous high that it was 1,000 to 20,000. It had these pullbacks of 30, 40% inside the cycle. Right. So people that are new don't know this. Right. They haven't experienced this. And, and I, I uh, was invested, not like I'm an invested today. Um, I was I was just nibbling. I was just starting out uh, in my uh, in my journey. Right. I didn't have uh, I was just you no. Know, I was uh, just finished university. So I was I was like a year or two into my job. So I didn't have, you know, big salary. It was OK salary. Right. I was an engineer still. <laughs> right. Um, but I remember talking to uh, friends at work, right? And we were, oh my God, like Bitcoin, oh, you seeing this? Oh my God, it was, it just, it was crazy, right? And then 2020 was really weird because we had the pandemic and then it came to, you know, about 10,000. It did a 6X, right? So it went from 10,000 to 60,000. But if you go high to high, it was only 3X. So it went from 20,000 was the previous high to 60,000 or 68,000. So it only did around 3X from high to high. From low to high, by the way, it went from 3,000, which was the low, to 68,000. So you could say from the low to the high, it did 20x, right? Um, so we have now, right, the low of this cycle was 15,000, right? Uh, 15,000. So if we just say 20x from here, it brings us to around 300,000, 350,000, which is my, uh, you know, zone that I think that is possible that we'll get um, without something too crazy happening, right? Um, now, what am I doing now, right? Because that's, you know, how I opened up the, the video, right? I'm not making any changes currently. I have my positions. Um, I'm comfortable with my positions. I'm in a situation where I build it in a way that if it goes down 20, 30, 40%, I'm still comfortable with the positions because they are long-term positions, okay? Now, what I'm also doing is I'm taking advantage of movements. So if we have a 10, 15% movement to the downside, I'm taking advantage of that, right? And I'll be either day trading or swing trading, right? These movements. 
has nothing to do, right? I could see an asset that I'm looking at it and I see, oh, uh, it's, you know, it's moving very volatile, right? There's lots of intraday movements or lots of weekly movements up and down, up and down, and I'll take advantage of that. But my core positions, right? My core, what's in my, in my wallet, uh, that I'm not touching. Right, those are positions that uh, I'm I'm solid with, and maybe if I make some nice money from the short-term trading, then I'll take those profits and put it uh, in assets that I feel have potential. But th currently, because the market is not that sure yet in where it's going, I find it's easier for me to take advantage of movements. Right? Sometimes it will be good. Sometimes it go against you. You know, doing this kind of trading, short-term trading, is very tricky because you can have one asset that suddenly is up, right? And then suddenly an hour or two later, it's down 5% right? or 10%. And if you don't have the correct safeguards, even if you take a loss on a trade, right? You're not gonna win every trade. But if you are profitable, if you have 10 trades and you have eight out of 10 are green and two are red, right? Uh, but they're small red, right? And the eight others are nice greens, then you'll, be in a net positive but if those two are big losses that blow up your account then you did nothing with the previous eight so that's stuff that i talk about in, in other videos when we're talking about leverage and things like that but i'm relaxing right on my long-term positions right i build it up nicely again if there's an asset a project that i really like then maybe you know i'll add some more there taking profits from the short-term um, assets, moving into the long-term assets. Because I'm kind of capped out on my investments, <laughs> right? I, I don't have a lot of cash free, right? Uh, it's either in stocks, which is doing very good, right? So, so I'm focused there as well, right? Um, and crypto is kind of sleepy now. So, okay, it's okay if I shift a little bit of my attention to stocks, which is freaking me out too, because it's, at all time highs and big numbers, right? And like, what's going on there, right? We're going into an election, so that's uh, right. And I'm looking at real estate and so I'm kind of capped out, but this is just me. Like maybe you have, I don't know, cash on the side that you were waiting to deploy and you're like, I don't know, will it go down more? Will it go up more? You have to put a plan in place, right? I always talk about this. We have to plan short-term, mid-term, long-term. What are my goals? What am I trying to do here? Am I trying to make, you know, you know, uh, money to, to go to my boss and say, hey, I'm quitting, right? Or am I trying to just have enough money for retirement? Or am I trying to just, you know, double my income or whatever? It, it depends on what you're trying to do with crypto. Right. Um, so that's very important to remember, of course, not financial advice. And you should always do your own due diligence before you decide to invest. What I'm doing might not be good for you and what you're doing might not be good for me. Right. You might be in a, in a place around the world where cost of living is cheap and, you know, I don't know, a thousand dollars is a lot. And someone else might be living in uh, Singapore where a thousand dollars is not a lot. Right. So it all depends where you are, what you're doing, what's your life, what your obligations are, what your expenses are, things like that. So that's why I usually don't tell you specifically, like I say, hey, I'm buying this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, because I don't know exactly what everybody's situation is. Right. I'll show you a trade once in a while uh, that I'm doing. Um, of course, I make uh, trades that I, I make money. The one I showed you before, I it closed out on a stop loss. I made, I think, uh, 150% on that. But I've also had trades that lost. Like that was, I was just, the, the trade was open while I was going. And I've made trades that lost money as well. But I am net positive, And that's what's important, right? Um, so you can make a lot of money, but you can lose a lot of money with day trading and leverage trading and short-term trading. So you have to be very careful and please trade responsibly, okay? Um, so now is the time things are not too crazy. Try to figure out what's good for you. Thank you for watching. Check out the links in the description down below. Don't forget to smash the like button. And like I always say, let's make a lot of money.